Alrighty, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyperX video breakdown. In today's video, we're going to be discussing and talking through some fundamental pieces that you might have missed as we wrapped up 2023 and some things to be paying attention to as we head into 2024. Discussing and talking about two majorly impactful technological revolutions that are set to completely revolutionize our entire existence, artificial intelligence and digital assets. Just giving you guys some um, insights from some industry leading experts and some large financial institutions. Just to solidify that this is where things are headed, that we are in a fourth industrial revolution, i.e. a digital transformation. I like to give you guys the physical down to earth proof, no mainstream media attention. This is all stuff that's never going to make it to the mainstream. So if you enjoy these video breakdowns, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. We do appreciate the love and the support. Now we're going to start here with this Deloitte document, major consulting firm <clears throat> helping large organizations with this digital transformation process. And they go on to mention that the time to prepare is now. This is something that we've been attempting to convey to the general public across all of our platforms for some time, that if you do not study, if you do not start to get involved now, you will most likely fall behind. How do we know this? They're telling these large organizations that that is to be the case. So for the manual retail investor or the every average day citizen, it's the same exact thing, right? <clears throat> so looking at this document, and this document is called Crunch Time, Finance 2025, and it gives some of their predictions. Now, again, that significant year, 2025, in my personal opinion, is going to be the year where we see uh, at least a semi-peak of the next bull market cycle that we are about to enter into. Summer 2025, in my personal opinion, is going to be very interesting because that is when a lot of regulations in the digital asset space and the artificial intelligence space will be further solidified. Here you can see it goes on to talk about the finance factory transactions will be touchless as automation and blockchain reach deeper into financial operations. And then here it goes on to say how none of us know for certain what the future will hold, but we will all have a responsibility to be thinking about what is likely to happen and to prepare for it now. Okay. So again, this is a message from a major consulting firm. This isn't coming from us here at CyberX. We're just conveying this information to you all. It also says here how over the next seven years, these uh, same technologies will be coming to your organization with the promise of making finance better, faster, and probably less expensive. So <clears throat> again, just showing you all that they tell you these things in advance, that you should be preparing for it, and that you should be educating yourself on these technological advancements. Now, this was a very interesting uh, fundamental piece Put out in the CyberX private research, and it goes on to solidify that the infrastructure, the foundational layer uh, that is capable of handling financial liquidity and volume is set in place and is ready for these large financial institutions to start, to start trading and transacting in these digital assets, which is extremely bullish because in the previous bull market cycles, back in 2017, 2020, and 2021, we did not have that foundational infrastructure ready to handle large amounts of volume via these institutional players. So I find any development surrounding these topics very interesting. And you can see this is a partnership with an organization called Rule Match and a partnership between them and Medico. And you can see here, it talks about how a growing number of banks and financial institutions have actually been quite active in the cryptocurrency market. Here you can talk. Or here you can see that this rule match platform is only for banks and security firms, and those are the only people that can become rule match participants. So this is not for retail. This is just to solidify that these bank and institutions now have platforms that they can utilize to onboard themselves into the space. This is directly from RuleMatch.com, and it says. RuleMatch is a premier digital asset trading venue for financial institutions. Built with NASDAQ technology and located in Zurich, the heart of Europe, RuleMatch offers spot trading of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It adheres to the highest of standards for the financial industry. Participants on RuleMatch are served by a broad and experienced team of banking, technical, and crypto financial experts. The mission of RuleMatch is to accelerate the tradition 
of trading digital assets for financial institutions with best-in-class technology and service and help open the way for the next great phase of the industry's evolution. So this is extremely bullish in my personal opinion. Obviously, them partnering with Medico, a Ripple-acquired digital asset custody provider, is aside the point. But the fact that we're seeing the foundational infrastructure, the the support needed for these financial institutions to onboard themselves being built behind the scenes is extremely bullish in my personal opinion. Now, I want to take your attention since we're on the topic of infrastructure <clears throat> and that foundational layer being built for these large financial institutions. I want to take your attention to a PDF that was shared in our private CyberX research chat from Citi. Okay? So again, this is coming from a very large financial institution. And here you can see them talk about the future of cross-border payments who will be moving $250 trillion in the next five years? This rem this reminds me of a city representative, David Cunningham, in previous video clips and panel discussions where he goes on to confirm that in the near future, this digital asset space will scale to the trillions in volume on a daily basis, right? So as we scroll down here, you can see some very interesting topics mentioned. It says right here, the world of cross-border payments is at an inflection point. As the ecosystem is shaken up by new competition and technologies, there will inevitably be, inevitably be winners and losers. All players must remain nimble and adapt if they are going to retain their market share and thrive. I highlighted that because, again, that key significance of stating that you must adapt, you must learn, you must educate yourself, you must move forward with these technological advancements if you want to survive. Okay, And that goes for the retail space as well. You should be studying, you should be engaged, you should be active in this space, in this technological revolution, if you want to experience life-changing wealth. And again, my personal opinion, it's not financial advice, do your own research. Here you can see it mentions the changing cross-border payment space will favor those elevating and concentrating on the client experience, while over 50% of banks see the need to revamp their front ends to improve their client experience. And over 60% of respondents point to the need to upgrade their core infrastructure. I've shown you in multiple previous video breakdowns that these banking institutions are for a fact enhancing their backend infrastructure in order to participate in this digital asset ecosystem, right? Uh, moving forward here, you can see it talks about the digital transformation, legacy technology system upgrade, core infrastructure upgrade. So again, we're not making this stuff up here at CyberX. We're attempting to show you that these large financial institutions have documents out that confirm that this is all happening, right? Digital transformation, these key vocabulary points. Now, if I go ahead and I type in crypto here, <clears throat> what I want you to focus on is here it goes on to confirm. Digital assets will have a place in cross-border payments. Granted, this PDF is asking the question, who will manage $250 trillion in the next five years? Keep that in mind. So this is confirming that digital assets will have a place in cross-border payments, but it is too early to say what that may be. Then it goes on to talk about how the pullback in the cryptocurrency markets over the past two years has given many people pause when it comes to many use cases of digital currencies. So again, capitalize on the fact that the digital asset space as a whole, even given the recent uptick, is still, excuse me, extremely discounted comparably to their all-time highs, okay? Just take that into consideration. Again, it's not financial advice. So we'll go back over to some of the documents that I shared for you guys on the X space. Now, this document we're going to get into because the vast majority of the general public is consumed by the approval of these Bitcoin ETFs, okay? Now, there's a couple different things that I think are going to drive this market forward aside from the Bitcoin ETFs, like private family offices coming into this space, hedge funds, asset managers, and a whole slew of retail market participants, obviously, of course, once the mass hysteria kicks in and you start to see commercials and advertisements and billboards all up about cryptocurrency again, that's yet to come. Um, but here you can see this document <clears throat> talking about how they project the market cap of the digital asset space to reach $49 trillion by 2025. Okay, This is coming from the Global Digital Asset Outlook 2024 PDF, again, shared in our private CyberX research chat. But now here, this is what I want you guys to focus in on, because the vast majority of the mainstream media is projecting these Bitcoin ETFs to get approved on the 10th of January, yet here you can see a list of final deadlines for these spot Bitcoin ETFs, and they push all the way back. 
until May of this year. I'm not stating that this is set to happen or that these Bitcoin ETFs aren't going to get approved next week. If they don't, don't be butthurt if we see some market manipulation, given the fact that it was projected to the masses on the mainstream media. Here you can see the dates. So that way you have them before they start being projected to the masses on the mainstream. As always, trying to keep you guys ahead of the curve, you can see the, the longest Bitcoin ETF approval date goes all the way to the 30th of May, and that is for Franklin Templeton's Bitcoin ETF and Hashtag's Bitcoin ETF, okay? And you can screenshot these dates if you want, so that way you have them to be paying attention to. <clears throat> now, going back to this document where it talks about $49 trillion by 2025, how do we accomplish that? Well, remember in a previous video breakdown, I mentioned to you guys via a panel discussion that these banking institutions know who holds the most wealth in the world right now, and that is baby boomers. They hold like 80% of the global wealth in the market right now. Okay, so here, this is a document confirming that the banks are coming for the boomers' money. Okay, this is the document, Old Mutual, unveiling our journey of transformation again talking and discussing about that digital transformation vocabulary. Here you can see it says, a forthcoming trend on the horizon focuses on digital asset offerings as high net worth individuals and clients actively pursue portfolio diversification. So we know that these baby boomers, okay, these high net worth individuals are going to want access to this digital asset class. And the banks know that. The banks are going to want to house that money once that transition comes. Okay, that's what they're building right now. Their interest now spans a wide spectrum of external investment solutions, particularly in digital assets, from cryptocurrencies to indirect crypto investments through exchange-traded funds, i.e. ETFs. Again, it says right here, financial advisors must proactively adapt to stay relevant. So there's that consistency. You've now seen three documents mentioned that in order to stay relevant, in order to not go extinct, in order to... Um, evolve with the changing landscape, you must adapt, you must educate yourself, you must start to engage in these digital assets. I cannot stress enough the like the evidence is clear as day. And again, this, the mainstream media is never going to show you any of these documents. So that's why, again, you should be subscribed to CyberX, you should be following us. And if you want access to any of this information, join our monthly Discord server, where we have hundreds of documents, hundreds of hours of research on these topics, and you can just go do the research yourself, okay? Educate yourself further, help your family, help your friends learn what's happening behind the scenes. Moving on, um, we have some very interesting documents and fundamental dates coming up in the near future. So we're going to transition over to that. In 2024, some massive summits and some blockchain conferences to be paying attention to. Here you can see this is a identity and payments summit coming up. Digital currencies, and it mentions are reshaping finance. They offer new payment frontiers, cross-border investments, and secure contracts via blockchain. Uh, this event is coming up in February the 26th to the 28th in 2024, so something to be paying attention to. But what I noticed is that these participants were sponsoring the event and going to be participating. FIS, which is a Ripple partner. Um, then we also have MasterCard, which is a Ripple partner. And then we also have Idemia, which is a Hedera partner. So I find that very interesting. Again, just paying attention to detail. Here you can see it mentions how we are on the verge of a new frontier for payments, right? It talks about how digital currencies will shape the future of payments in one way or another. So again, this is an event that's set to come out in the near future in 2024. Keep that in mind, given the mass hysteria and fear narrative that had been pumped through the markets all the way back in 2022 and throughout the majority of the year in 2023, right? They tried to take your attention away from the digital asset space, but this particular event was probably planned months ago, okay? Um, now, also coming up, this is going to be very interesting, and now this is where we're going to transition into the artificial intelligence narrative, okay? We know that artificial intelligence is going to coexist in the future with digital assets, with cryptocurrencies, and it is a major technological revolution that you, again, should be focusing on because there are vast investment opportunities in the artificial intelligence niche that you, again, in my personal opinion, should be paying attention to, not financial advice, just do your own research. So here, you can see... This is the seventh annual GBBC Blockchain Central Davos event taking place in just a couple of days, actually less than 10 days, January 14th 
through the 18th of 2024. And you can see here, Ripple is going to be a participant of this event, along with Algorand. Personally, I don't invest in Algo, but <clears throat> they will be a participant at, the, at, this event, at this event as well, along with the BIS Innovation Hub and some other major banks. Um, so just be paying attention to that. We're going to get a vast amount of information from that event, just like we did last year and the previous year. But what I want you all to pay attention to is that in order to get to this event, right, these large market participants, these systemically important organizations and these elites, okay, they're going to have to transport themselves to this event. That means private jets, helicopters, vehicles, all driving them and taking them to this event. While at the same time, what are they going to be talking about, right? Climate change, the climate narrative, okay? It's all make-believe. If they really believed in this, they would just host this event online via virtual Zoom call or something like that, but they won't because they all know that this is fake, okay? So remember I showed you on a previous video breakdown of a gentleman confirming that they are going to use the climate change narrative as their best friend to enact this digital transformation. They openly admitted that. It's not hidden and I'm not making that up. Okay. Here you can see this is from the United Nations Governing AI for Humanity. And look at what they say. Climate change represents a global and universal challenge, one where a collective response requires sustainable digital transformation, thoughtfully designed, new infrastructure, there's those key vocabulary words, and the ability to deliver precise decision making at scale. AI-driven approaches are particularly well-suited to this challenge, integrating key developments in machine learning, large language models, high-quality data analytics, and more to create new capacities. So again, this is just further proof that they're going to utilize this climate change narrative in order to push this digital transformation. Meanwhile, they're literally taking private jets and helicopters and most likely Escalades and Chevy Tahoes that burn lots of fossil fuels to this event, okay? It just makes absolutely no sense when you think about it logically, um, considering what it is that they're trying to push. Here is a, another document. This is from EY, another major consulting firm. Now, pay attention to what I said on the X space. I said, it's really sad that 95% of the population is about to be left behind unable to capitalize on this massive opportunity because they can't read a document, but they can binge watch a Netflix series, right? So remember in the previous documents that we've covered in today's video breakdown, the vast majority of them state that if you do not adapt, if you do not start to study, if you do not start to accept this digital transformation, your business or you yourself will fall behind, right? Well, here, this is confirming that a lot of these large organizations are set to transform their backend infrastructure. Here it says 64% of companies that have already experienced a significant impact from Gen AI expect that it will redefine their entire business and operating model in two years or less. This document was from 2023. So think about that time frame. That puts us in when? 2025. Okay. 2025, I'm telling you guys right here is going to be such a significant year. Here it goes on to say. While the vast majority of 99% of CEOs are planning to invest in Gen AI, the investment landscape is complex. So here it confirms that 99%, 99%, not 50, not 20, not 30, not 80, 99 people, okay, are planning to invest in generative AI. 70% of CEOs recognize that their organization must act now on Gen AI to avoid giving their competitors a strategic advantage. Hmm, again, there's that mention of if you do not adapt, if you do not start to invest, if you do not start to engage in this fourth industrial revolution, you will be left behind, right? The evidence is clear. This is now over five documents from large organizations confirming this information. It's not me making this up. I'm just here as a middleman presenting this information to you all so you can tap in, okay? It, we're in an age of information. If you are neglecting yourself, the ability to educate your family, your friends, your own personal interests further. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's literally embarrassing at this point if you can't just take some time out of your day to see what's happening um, via the back end and not what's happening through the mainstream. What's happening in the mainstream right now? Freaking aliens walking around Miami. <laughs> I swear, it's insane. Meanwhile, all this stuff is happening, okay? People are not paying attention. 
Now, here's another event coming up, and I thought that this one was interesting. I'll end the video here. So many blessings to you guys if you've enjoyed this video breakdown, if you enjoy these types of updates, giving you all the realest information behind the scenes via the documents, these large institutions, these organizations actually telling you this stuff. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe again. Consider joining us in the monthly CyberX Discord where you have access to all of this stuff. Not only that, but you have access to our technical analysis, our fundamental breakdowns, and engagement with inside our private CyberX community. Um, but tap in okay now is the year if you don't know where to find this stuff i'm giving you a platform we've built a platform here at cyprex for you to have information uh, uh, at an easily reachable um you know glance okay it's very simple to do this type of research here is another event happening in 2024 particularly in april which is my birthday month um but here you can see let's just pay attention to these organizations okay this is literally a vast list of large banks bank of america you got american express bnb paribus you got freaking pnc you got Wells Fargo, State Street, Citibank. I mean, this is literally trillions of dollars in one screenshot, right? So take that into consideration because look at what they're going to be talking about here. Deep dive tracks, synchronizing innovation where banking experience meets cutting edge technology, okay? On April 3rd, they're going to be talking about advancing the ABCs. What are the ABCs? Assets, blockchain, and crypto. So they will be discussing and talking about this as we head into 2024. Remember, crypto is not dead. It's not going anywhere. This digital transformation is just going to take time. Last but not least, it says the future of banking is digital. It is no longer a question, but a fact. So this is just to prove to you all, again, this is a statement coming from a blockchain or a summit, okay, a digital finance summit where it's going to host all of these large banking institutions. And they're telling you that this digital transformation is a fact, okay? So again, just trying to show you all that we're not making this stuff up. This is for you to tap in. Many blessings. Make sure that you subscribe to the platform. Smash that thumbs up button so that it helps boost the algorithm and push these videos out to more individuals interested in this information like yourselves. Remember, I'm not telling you guys to go out there and invest in digital assets and invest in artificial intelligence. But what I am asking that my followers take it upon themselves to do is to tap into research to make your own informative decisions. As always, I'll see you all in the next video breakdown. Mm -hmm.